Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we get the usual suspects. Hello, Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zano. Mike, how are you? Doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. And, of course, your cohort, your nightcap cohort, the nightcap OG. Dude, buddy. Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? Great, great. It's so it's so refreshing to see both of you sober. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Good. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things? Good. Happy to be on the show again. And still just two kids, right? Yep, just two. <laughs> keep I it see I set that up for you. Just like, that I know of. And then yeah, last well, but not least... Uh, didn't want to go there. <laughs> we got your flight school Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Good, Mark, and I still have two kids, too. You st yeah, you've got two. Eric's got two. Mike's got 12. Scott Bossman's got 102 now, Scott. <laughs> We that I know of. And counting, and counting. <laughs> him, and Zane, him and Zano have their own Brady Bunch, man. They do. They got, yeah. There's a, lot, there's a lot to be said for big families. Which, which, is, um, which is a very valid question, I think, uh, for, like, kind of talks about, you know, kind of our theme for the day, too, right? Right. Which is, Tate Litchfield, what is our theme for the day? <clears throat> We're going to talk about... Uh, Kind of the end of the year, uh, as all of our listeners know, we all rely very, very heavily on working with VAs. And so the topic we want to discuss is, should you, are you going to send your team, your VAs, some sort of end of year Christmas bonus, holiday bonus, whatever you want to call it, are you going to do something for them at the end of the year? And just kind of want to get an idea of what that looks like for our different uh, land geek coaches on the call today. I think it's a great topic. And actually, I don't have a chapter on this uh, for Dirt Richer, the book about scaling your land business, but I definitely should um, for sure. Because I think it's interesting because the intake manager bonus, we could give a range there because that might be a little bit different than your due diligence team bonus, which might be extremely different than your sales assistant bonus and then or an acquisition manager bonus. Um, you know, your Craigslist poster, it's just gonna be different for different roles and what they do and how much time they spend and, uh, and how much you're paying them on a on an hourly or monthly basis. So I think it's a really great topic. And I think we could get real meta with it in the book, not necessarily on the podcast. Um, what do you think, Tate? Yeah, I think it's a it's a topic that uh, definitely needs to be addressed. I mean, certain cultures have different customs. And if you're going to work in these different uh, uh, locations, it's in your best interest to respect those customs and you need to be aware of those. If you don't, you know, you're probably not winning any favors or good graces with the VAs that you employ out in those areas. So it's a good topic to discuss. I mean, obviously what we're going to say is our recommendations. And I think it's important to recognize that what we might do for one VA could differ based on how long that VA has been working with us, right? The VA that just started with us, maybe won't get the same type of a bonus as somebody who's been with the company for three, four years. Um, right. right. So I, I think that's fair. You know, it's, it's definitely based on your performance to a certain extent and your loyalty and longevity within the organization. Yeah, absolutely. So I think let's just start with Mike Zeno. I think the, so the, the best question to start with is, are you going to be bonusing them? Number one, and then if you are going to bonus them, when are you going to bonus them? And how do you think you're going to bonus them? Is it going to be a gift? Is it going to be a gift card? Or is it going to be cold, hard cash? Mike Zeno? What do you think? What do you, let's start with you. Well, I think Tate made some really good points. Um, I would, we do uh, believe in the bonuses. I believe in cold, hard cash, uh, rather than trying to decipher what they would really like to have. 
Um, but we're, we're always working with our VAs throughout the year. I know uh, Tate had mentioned something prior to the call and we did something, some, I mean, all the time. Like yesterday, one of my uh, VAs, um, she's really good. And she's telling me about how she bought a new chair because uh, her back was getting sore in the other chair. And I said, well, where'd you get the chair? And she told me, I said, well, how much you pay for it? Great. I said, well, let's, well, we'll pay for that. You know, so little, I think little, little bonuses along the way can, can do a lot. To, to help out, you know, if they're performing well. And I do think that, you know, um, obviously some, I think that the bonus should be based upon if it's gonna be cash and what their hourly rate is and, and how many hours they work for you and some sort of uh, configuration of that, right? Because there are some that work a lot more hours. Some may work close to 40 hours, others may work uh, five hours, depending on what their task is. So having it sort of connected to that is I think a solid idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Scott Bossman, what are your thoughts? No, kind of similar to Mike. I mean, we kind of have these random acts of, uh, you know, giving throughout the year, depending on how, how good a month we've had. I would say at the end of the year, uh, we have a couple of VAs that we do reward with some cold, hard cash. Uh, and listen, I guess I'm of the mentality that, you know, <clears throat> I think, uh, I'm going to be better. Our team's going to be better. Uh, you know, it may even lead to a better income for our team if we're giving, uh, and you know, if we have an influence in that way uh, to to give to others that are on our team who are producing in a in a great capacity. So I think it's a uh, you know it's a cycle, uh, it's a love cycle in the in the in the business. I think. I like that the love cycle. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, definitely want to keep our, our VAs happy. We want to treat them right. They do so much for us and we're grateful for that. And so, you know, I like what uh, both Mike and, and Scott said about doing tiny little bonuses or, or little gestures of gratitude throughout the year. I mean, one of the things that we do often is if we meet with a uh, we have one VA that we meet with regularly. They're US based. And what we'll do is have a working lunch where we live in the age where you can send somebody, you know, a Jimmy John's sandwich to their house and eat lunch with them during a call and something like that. It goes really, really far. Um, and it, it really leaves uh, your VAs with a good taste in their mouth about working with you and, and doing the extra work that you're required to, to take it to the next level. So things like that are great. Um, Tiny bonuses, end of the year stuff. No cash pun is intended, great. by the way. That's good taste in your mouth. Right, exactly. Wait, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I think so wait, go we, ahead. we actually are in a situation where, you know, one of our VAs may or may not be listening to this podcast. So, uh, Mark, I guess you want to let the secret out. You're going to. You are getting a bonus for sure. And Absolutely. It's filled with love and gratitude for all the value that you help create. So thank you. And it's just a token of our gratitude. And that's the thing, like these, these bonuses, you know, don't think you have to give a terrible amount of money. I mean, give what you can be generous, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it is a bonus and something beats nothing. Right. And it's, it's a gesture of, of thank you for what they've done. And so, um, Absolutely, our VAs get bonuses. Yeah, for sure. Eric Peterson, the technician. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so December's just around the corner. Um, and pretty much every year in, in December, I, I give out bonuses to my various VAs. Uh, the ones that are overseas, typically the best method for that is is just a cash bonus. If, if they're employed through Upwork, you can, you can apply a bonus to their Upwork account. Um, that's probably the most efficient. It gets really hard to try and send some kind of gift if it's overseas. Um, so that's what we'll tend to do with, with the overseas VAs. And it, it really does um, depend on their role within the company. Um, certain people as I think Mike was saying, you know, they work more hours or maybe they have a more important role in the business, you know, and, and you got to kind of wait out those bonuses, depending on the value the um, employee has to, to your business and the, the growth of your business. But um, 
I know it's, it's a time I look forward to every December when I sit down and I open up Upwork and I start going through all of my VAs and, uh, you know, determine what kind of bonuses I can give them this year. Um, so those that have been with me for a long time, they probably expected at this point, but I'm okay with that. Like, I think, uh, you know, the, the value that they provide to my company, um, is well worth it. And, you know, I want to give them something a little extra around the holidays to, to be able to do what they want with it. Um, on, on the U S based VAs, um, I, I would like whenever possible to actually give them something physical instead of money or possibly both some kind of a gift and some kind of money. Um, so, you know, I mean, most of us don't have that many VAs that work in the U S but when we do, you know, that gives you the opportunity to, to maybe give them a little something special, maybe just a gift from your hometown or um, something, you know, they'd be interested in because you know what their hobbies are, what have you. But, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's really important to reward those people that are, are helping you grow this business. Yeah, I, I love it. And, and gift giving in and of itself is a skill. And there are some people who are really good at it. And I think the key is they just pay a lot of attention to it. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I'm just not that thoughtful. So, but I'm trying to get better at it uh, and, and paying closer attention to it. But uh, when I was younger, I, it was, you know, like, you know, Tate's age and you know, dealing with the kids and they were young and um, it was just more about that than just thinking about other people. And then as you get older, like, oh, wait, this is, feels really good. And you start developing the skill and paying attention, like, what would that person like? And one of the, I think one of the tricks that I found was find out what they're, what they're buying for someone else. Because usually what they're buying for someone else is what they want, but they won't buy it for themselves. Um, is, is what I found in my, is I'm getting older, you know, but certainly not as old as Scott Todd, which Scott, what are you thinking, man? I'm thinking that for Christmas, I'm going to buy you like, uh, uh, like a Rolls Royce ghost, like, you know, is that why, why would, I, would I want a Rolls Royce ghost? You don't, well, but Scott does. You, you should think about it. You think about it. You and want then... a Rolls Royce? Really? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I just had to do it, right? Like, I, if that's the way that it works, if they're buying something for somebody else, well, then that's what I'm buying you. First of all, you're not going to Burns in a Rolls Royce Ghost. I know you. you you'd, be, you'd, be, you'd be anxious about the parking. Mm. You know, Look, your wife, you're like, are we really taking this car? Mark, when I, when I had my corporate gig and um, I got promo and I got promoted, they gave me an, uh, a company car. And the company car was a uh, Mercedes okay, SUV. Like I'm talking like the $80,000 deal back many years ago. And we drive it. I'm telling my wife, like, let's go to the movies. So we go to the movies, take the family to the movies. Kids are in the back seat. I only, is, I literally got it that weekend. Take it to the movies. But the movie theater we were going to was like in, turned out to be like in a rougher area. So like my wife's like, I don't think we should get out of the car. Like people are looking at us in this car. Like, so we then left that movie theater and went all the way across town to another movie theater that we knew just because we were like, this car is like a little too, uh, a little too expensive, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, you got to watch out your car piece. You're probably right. I probably wouldn't go in the Rolls Royce Ghost. I, I don't know. Um, anyways, going I'm, the VA, I'm writing it down, though. Anyway. Yeah, you should. You should because, you know, who knows? I mean, if you win the lottery and you want to share, I mean, you know. No, no, no I'm, I'm not going to win the lottery. I'm just going to lease it for you for three years. Oh. And then see how you deal better. with it. Even better. You, you could use your uh, infinite banking money, too. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, so regarding the, the, regarding the VAs, I do think that, I do think that, uh, and I, look, I'm a terrible gift giver. I, I, no, it doesn't, just doesn't work with me. Okay. Like, I admit it. I'm terrible at it. But essentially, I think that there's little things that you can do. I like what Mike said, like, they, you, you know, someone on your team tells you that you got, that they just got a chair. And then you say, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, tell me about it. How much was that chair? You know, it's just normal conversation for somebody. Next thing you know, you could, you could surprise them and go, hey, listen, I, I, wa I want to pay for your chair. 
wow, you want to talk about building building uh, loyalty. You want to talk about someone who's going to like do some work for you. You should have a chair, like the reimbursement of the chair. That's something they weren't even expecting. That Those little pops, they make a, a big deal. Um, and then regarding the holidays, I do think that you got to be aware of the customs in the country. Philippines, you know, they have the 13th month. So you got to take care of, you got to take care of them if you want to do the right thing. You don't have to, but you can. And for me, I, I don't know, man, like cash, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give them cash. Why? Because I'm not a good gift giver. And at the end of the day, they can go do whatever they want to do. Maybe, maybe for some people, it pays for some, someone in their family's Christmas present or something like that. So I'd rather just do cash. And uh, I think people just appreciate it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I love what you know everybody said about the random acts through the year. I think that has more power than the you know Christmas gift or even a birthday gift for that matter, because it's more kind of expected. But when it's unexpected, it has that power. And I think that when you're going to give cash to a a, a VA, um, it's great, and I think they'll appreciate it. But I think that what we haven't talked about is the card or the sentiments that go with it and taking a little extra time to express your gratitude and not in a general way necessarily, but be specific and say, when you do this, you know, for our, our team, you know, this is really what, you know, the, what you're doing. Here's what this value looks like. It's not just, um, that it's, it's going into, you know, whatever into the ether, like you're making, you're having a big impact on someone's life because of the work that you're doing. Like that person might not ever be able to own an asset that lasts forever, if not for you and what you do on a daily basis. And, you know, getting really kind of detailed with it, um, I think even goes longer way because they'll forget the cash at some point, but they won't forget the sentiment behind it which I think is, is more powerful. Um, but Tate's got a skeptical look on his face. Do you disagree, Tate? Tate's no, like, no, I, you know what? Just give me the cash. No, I think that, you know, the cash is obviously a really nice bonus. People love it. They can do what they want with it. But having somebody know that they're, they're valued, that's really, really important. And if you can express that to your team, they'll be with you through thick and thin, through the up and downs. And really, that's what we're all trying to do here. We're trying to build a business that runs whether or not we're sick, whether we're on vacation, right? That is bomb-proof and bulletproof. And the only way you can do that is with good people. And I think that once you find those good team members, treat them well, show your gratitude frequently and often, give when you can, and uh, bless their lives with these tiny little bonuses. Because $100 in the US, yeah, that's a good amount of money, but $100 in the Philippines, that goes a lot further, right? And and there's things that you can do that will really just make your team be as you know committed to the long-term success of the company and the business as you are. So I think this is a great topic and it's perfectly timed. It's awesome. No, absolutely. So Tate, do we have time to go through countries' customs? Can you define, well, let's just, let's just take the Philippines because that's probably going to be the most popular country. Yeah, Scott what talked about it the, 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 13th the 13th month. The 13th month, I basically, um, and Scott, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but basically what you do is you pay them as if they had worked an extra month for you. And so if you pay that VA 100 bucks a month, come end of the year, you give them a bonus uh, for what you would pay them for working another month. And that's the 13th month bonus. And, you know, it's a recommendation. I don't think it's a, you know, a must do, but uh, it certainly goes a long way when you recognize that custom and that culture. Other places, you know, do some research, Google it, figure out how they they uh, celebrate these end of the year customs and holidays, and uh, be respectful of that. Okay, Mike Zano, what are your thoughts? I think this is all great input. I think it's uh, caused me to think even deeper about what I do for my VAs and how I can, I mean, really are the backbone of our business, right? These are the people that take care of all the minutia, all the small details. This is what we're all about, you know, delegation. So 
I think this was a great discussion and I uh, myself definitely thought of some new ways that I could, uh, you know, just step up and make them uh, feel appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Scott Bossman, here's, here's the flip side to this, the darker side of this. Uh -huh. You're going through bonuses and maybe you have a VA that you feel a little resent. You're like, you're kind of, you feeling like you're resenting giving the bonus because maybe throughout the year they weren't great all year. Do you listen to that signal? Do you listen to that metric? Like, wait a second. I'm so happy to give this person a bonus, this person a bonus, this person, this person, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Is that the time then to be like, it might be time to put someone new in that role. Yeah, I think if you're feeling resentment at that point in time, uh, you're probably too late in coming to the decision that maybe they shouldn't be on your team to begin with. So, uh, I mean, if they did, you know, I, uh, you know, if I'm giving bonuses to all my other VAs, of course, I'm going to be giving and give them a bonus at that time. Um, I'm not going to be resentful. I don't hold resentment except toward, you know, Mike Zeno. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to try to, you know, before I, before I have to have that internal conversation myself, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be uh, having it sooner. Yeah, it's so funny because like, I feel like we're all in that same boat. Like none of us really hold resentments except towards Zeno. And if you want to join the <laughs> I'm resentful of, Z of Zeno group, um, it's on Facebook. We already have 1,200 members and it's growing. Um, I, thought Facebook, so. I thought Facebook banned that group. Was that? Yeah, yeah. We, we got it reinstated because We're just fake members. It was so overwhelmingly popular. It was incredible like, the amount of firefighters that are joining. <laughs> See? But as Michael say, if they're, if, they're, if they're not making fun of you, they don't like you. They don't like you. So, so and by the way, this is all tongue in cheek. Please don't go on Facebook and look for a Mike Zano resentful group. <laughs> Nobody don't resents Mike. One. Please don't create one either. <laughs> What's that? Please don't create one either. Because yeah, we're not gonna, yeah, don't create one either. Everyone loves Mike. Oh, geez. Yeah. See, Bossman. I know. Stir in the pot. Stir in the pot again. Um, last question. Eric Peterson. As far as um, knowing how much to give, do you have a do you have a metric? Do you think to yourself, it's the thirteenth month? That's obvious for um, Philippines. But then, do you do that for a U.S. VA? Do you do that for someone in another part of, of the country, or do you, or is it something like how do you do it, or is it just something that depends on how good the year was, or? Yeah, I mean, I, I really think there's there's a lot of factors. I mean, certainly for the Philippines, it, it's a little bit easier because there is this kind of 13 month strategy in place already. So that's that's kind of a good benchmark to, to look at and decide if that works for you or what have you. But everywhere else, I, I think, you know, as I was saying before, you've you've got to look at, you know, the amount of time that VA works for you, um, the value they have within your business, um, you know, the, the person that may be responsible for selling your land and maybe the person that's responsible for acquiring your land, like those are super key roles in your business. So I would imagine they're probably spending the most time in your business and they might also be paid the most. So, you know, their bonuses are, are kind of in line with that, I would say. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, go outside your comfort zone when it comes to generosity. If, if you're not, you know, feeling a little uncomfortable about it, maybe you're not giving enough. What do you think about that, Eric Peterson? Is that a good rule of thumb? It is, I like it. Scott Todd? How you feel, how you feel about giving a ghost? uncomfortable but okay you know, then that's that should be the right amount there you go yeah probably not uncomfortable enough there you go man there you go uh, there you go but because i don't know man we're gonna drive that thing to the hangar 
Yeah, you can definitely. You're not gonna park it in the hangar. <laughs> can it tow a plane? Can it tow a plane? That's the question. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no. it's not for you then. Listen, I'm gonna put on some Frank Sinatra in the car and just start driving. I think it, should, Mike. I think we should do a poll. What would what, what car would fit Scott Todd? I I personally think you're a Tesla guy. Um. Okay, I like the Tesla. My son tells me, do not get a Tesla, Dad. Don't do it. It's a crappy car. I don't know. Okay. My son, oh, I don't think he'd be happy if I got a Tesla. I do have a car. I, I do have a kind of a car that I like, but we'll see. Maybe that would be a cool car, a uh, cool post. Okay. Cool. Anyways, um, well, I thought this was a really great topic. And... Uh, before we get to the tip of the week, that I think, not it, not it, not, not it. it. Uh, no. Bossman's got the tip of the week this week. Before we do it, I do no, want to give a shout out. He said not it. He said no deal. Uh, there's you Bossman. Are, uh, no, he raised his hand like I got it. I want like this. Got it. I want he's, it. He's no, no, no. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> he's taking it for the team. So nice. while he's while he's thinking of his tip of the week. I just want to give a shout out to our sponsor this week, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Flight School Sherpa. He's done thousands of times. Go up there safely, quickly, efficiently. And not only that, the tuition investment, you're going to make back 180 days or less guaranteed in cash or terms deals. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. TheLandGeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, or the Nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. All right, Scott Bossman, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Uh, you're probably going to haze me for this, but it's the only thing I can think of off the bat. I'm, I'm reading a book right now, which you had mentioned before, Mark. It's uh, called The Second Mountain. Love that. Hi. Uh, what's his name? David Brooks. David Brooks. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, Second Mountain. I would highly recommend it. It's, uh, it, you know, I know Scott Todd's going to, he's going to razz me about this. I can already see it on his face. But it kind of goes along with our conversation here because the first mountain is all about the individual, the ego, right? Uh, reaching all these goals in our life career wise family-wise, whatever. The second mountain is all about community. It's all about giving. Uh, it's all about getting to a point in life where you're not the most important person. And that's kind of what it is in our business too, right? I think if you look at your business that way, you're not the most important part of your business. Uh, you're helping provide for others. So I don't know. I think it kind of goes uh, hand in hand with our, our topic today. Yeah, I, I love his chapter on relationships. I love his chapter on faith. Um, yeah. community and vocation. Um, and all of us, this is a vocation. This is our calling to help everyone get out of solo economic dependency, which means if they're not working, they're not making any money. And we probably don't care how they do it. As long as they do it, we're offering one vehicle. And again, we argue it's the best passive income model. But that being said, I would be open to something better. And if someone thought it was better for them, that is the main mission, the main goal as our calling is helping you get out of social economic dependency, whether we can help you do it or not. So, um, yeah, I love that. I think, I think it's a, a great tip. Even Scott Todd's not ra razzing you, so it must have been good. I got nothing, man. All right. Oh, well, well, thanks, everybody. Um, and, uh, let's just do this. Oh, by the way, I do have to mention that, uh, the only way that we can continually put on the kind of peer pressure we did today for Scott Bossman to give us the tip of the week is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Please do that. Um, it really helps. All right. One, two, 
three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. And there's a vaccine coming out. Did you guys see that? Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Fingers crossed. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. It's what it, it was like 90%. It, it would help, right? Yeah. The results were pretty amazing. 90% effective. 90 be 50%. I didn't tell you guys, my parents got COVID. Ooh. Yeah. Um, they, they said it was very flu uh, but they did not have to go to the hospital. They were just aches, a little slight cough, um, did not sleep well the first two nights, or I like said they slept a lot the first two days, no appetite, um, but now they're, they're through it. Um, you know, crazy craziness so scott you've gotten it i have who uh, mike did you get it <laughs> no i was just thinking back to when we announced it or you announced it on the podcast that scott had it <laughs> that, that was not, total disregard that was, classic. <laughs> that, that was that was a complete violation of hipaa <laughs> by the way so uh well you're not I his do. doctor <laughs> yeah that yeah that's true why, why would that be bad though? I think it was early on. So I don't know. I think early on people were maybe a little bit more judgy. Like Scott Bosman, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing to get, how'd you get infected? That type of thing. Now everybody's getting it. So. Oh, oh. forever unclean. <laughs> Scott Bosman, forever unclean. I know. Yeah. I know. There are, there are certain things like you kind of get judgy about, but everyone gets them right. Like uh, lice. Right. Like I remember when my daughter got lice, like it was a, it was a scandal. Like you can't tell anybody. I'm like, what about her friends? Like, you, like you know, she's got to sleep over. Like you got to tell them. Like, no, the Podolsky house is dirty now. It's been marked with lice. I'm like, but everyone's getting it. Like, you know, like I knew people, like my friends, like we'd have lunch together. Like, don't tell anybody. Like, but we got lice. Like, and it's terrible. And like, doing the, you know, putting the clothes in the, in the dryer. I mean, I can't tell you, like, the pounds of clothes and then vacuuming and all this. But you know what? Everyone gets it. Your kids. Shh. All right. See, look at, look at Zeno's judgmental look. Fine. Everyone gets lice except for the Zeno's because they're oh, so. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. I'll I agree with that. Get it. That's one of them. Was there another one? I'm sure. COVID, apparently. COVID. <laughs> so uh, there's, no, there's no shame in life. There's no shame in COVID. All right. Judge free environment on this podcast. Yeah. Judgment free. Ooh. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Some, somewhat judgment free. We're, we're taking notes. Don't worry. I know who to stand next to and who not to stand next to. Man, brutal. So wait, so no one else has gotten it then. We're all very responsible and don't go to super spreader events like boss is <laughs> basically <laughs> what you're saying. Uh, that must be it. I oh, actually yeah. still to this day don't don't know where I got it, but we got it from teenagers the, in the house. I don't know how. Oh yeah, I mean, that's, uh, teenagers, that'll do it. I mean, didn't you get it from the Travis Scott concert? Right, right. Yeah. By the way, I bet we all have had it and just didn't know it. I had a lingering cough for like two months. I will tell you that back in, um, after the last boot camp in January, like I got sick for a little while, but I mean, was that it? Who knows, right? Like, I mean, I guess I could go get tested for the an antibody, but who knows when this thing was really here. Yeah, I don't know. But even if there's a vaccine, well, I think, you know what? I think we're going to be okay for, for Vegas by August, Tate. Do you think? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think we got to plan as if it is good and adjust accordingly. But I, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. We've got a better um, grasp on things and know, know how to treat it a whole lot better, so... Straight to my head right now. I think I might get judged. 
Wait, what was that, Mike? I'm afraid to itch my head. I got an itch, but I'm going to get judged. <laughs> yeah. I, you know it won't be me. Oh, you're right next to me. I'm pushing it over there. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't know if adults get lice. I think it's mainly kids. I've never heard of adults myself. I don't I've never. So. Yeah, they don't like adult adults so much. I don't know. I don't know how we brought that up. Oh yeah, the shame of COVID. <laughs> that's, that's that's where that came from. Is so. there such a thing as COVID shame? You don't feel that way, Bossman. Come on. No shame. I think I think he's no. right. Though. I think early on. I apologize. It's okay. I mean, that was one of the classic that, podcasts. You got it, Bossman, don't you? <laughs> you just blankly stared at you. Uh, <laughs> he gave you the, 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 the Bossman boot camp look. <laughs> Come on. You're telling me there's 300 to 1,000 percent margin in this business? <laughs> You're telling me you're buying property 25, 30 cents in the dollar? Aaron, let's look, let's look at this guy. You buying this? It's not how it was at all. Not at all. You sure? I told you, I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker. I, I put I my know. game face on when I'm thinking. I'm still traumatized by it. I still, <laughs> I still see. I can, I can picture the shirt. You had that white shirt on. Your muscles are bulging. Yeah. You're like. That, yeah, I think I think at one point during the break, Aaron looked at me and like went like this and like was like <laughs> scared me. Oh, All right, man. thanks everybody. See you guys later. Thanks, Mark. See ya.